Hi, my name is Leah Day, and welcome to this video for the Building Blocks Quilt Along. Today we're quilting our first uh, Cheater Drunkard's Path block. We're going to quilt it with lines and grids, lots of straight lines, lots of sharp angles, um, and we also are going to be kind of playing off those curving areas. In this particular block, we have these beautiful curves in the corners, and let me show you what the quilting design is going to look like over them. So you can see here, we've got these beautiful arch shapes, these beautiful curves, and I really wanted to emphasize that. Um, we've got some rows of echoing here and some ziggy zaggy lines. Uh, I think it looks really, really pretty. But we've also got this grid area in the middle, uh, and it's about a half inch to three quarter inch grid. It's not super tight together, but it's also not super far apart. And we're going to be using these edges all through here in order to travel stitch. So we might end up with quite a lot of travel stitching along this outer edge. And if you remember back to the piecing of this block, we kind of cheated on the piecing. Uh, we simply layered the fabrics and, and stitched that line and then clipped out and clipped away in order to create this shape. We didn't do any kind of setting in piecing for this. So we have a raw edge right here, and there's a lot of different ways that we can deal with that raw edge. We can leave it raw completely, or in free motion, we can zigzag on top of it and secure it if you want to. So I'm going to show you that in this block. I'm going to leave one with just a straight line, and there's going to be quite a lot of travel stitching here from this grid area. And on the other one, I'm going to try some free motion zigzag to secure those raw edges and show you the two different effects. So let's get started. So here I am on the block, and you can see I've already filled in this area, and it's just it's a really simple flow. You're going to stitch back and forth, and I like to go on ahead and hit this bottom line before I run through my zigzags, and then come back through and stitch these lines, then do another line of these zigzags, and then finish off over here and just travel stitch your way back up again. I've kind of zoomed across the block by stitching one of these grid lines, and now I'm going to knock out this section so you can see what I mean how I'm going to work through here. When hand placement with this block, we've got this arc shape here. And I have personally found that if I place my hands, and I've got this hand kind of pulling, and this hand kind of pushing a little bit, I don't have to reposition my hands that much for this block. Now, you might find this feels very awkward for you. But one thing I've been noticing with Josh, he does a lot of repositioning and shifting his hands and moving around. Part of free motion is figuring out how to place your hands and just do all of the guiding from here. You know, when we have a big quilt on the machine, we can't always be flipping it around. So um, it's one of those things that you might want to just find a good hand placement, set your hands down, and see if you can't flow through this area without so much shifting. Okay, so I'm going to get started just stitching right on my piecing line. The piecing line is on the surface of the block, and I'm just trying to stay right on top of it. It's almost like travel stitching, but I can barely see that line since I used blue thread, or I think it was black thread that really matched with uh, that fabric. So it was really kind of hard to see, but I tried to stay on it as best as I could. Okay, and now I'm going to swing down. And of course, I just rotated the block, so I'm lying. I do, I am repositioning quite a bit. But let me see if I can flow through the entire arc shape without moving my hands. So you can see what I mean. I oftentimes find, and the reason why I'm kind of really emphasizing this, when it comes to arcs, anything circular, oftentimes if you stop and shift and reposition, you're going to end up with a little spot right in the middle of the curve that kind of is a weird stitch, you know, bigger stitch or... Uh, just something kind of slightly uh, not uh, not smooth. So just kind of watch out for that. Here again, I'm going to just smoothly slide to that curve. Staying on the line without repositioning your hands, um, especially as you really you're changing position as you stitch through that, it can be tricky. Now I'm going to kind of flow through these zigzags back and forth. If you can't see it, of course feel free to rotate. If you can't see what you're doing, then obviously something needs to change. But I can pretty much see all of these angles. I've got to guesstimate my space and how much area I have to hit and fill. 
Now these lines were not designed to go all the way to these stitching lines before, but if you wanted to stretch them out and have them go basically from this line of quilting to this line of quilting, you can. I kind of like them floating like this, but understand there's no right or wrong way of doing it. There's no right or wrong way of doing any of this. Always keep that in mind. There's no, no set rules to free motion quilting. Alright, now I'm getting into these smaller arcs. I can pretty much leave my hands in position and just work my way through each one. Remember, if you stitch off the line, that line, especially if you marked your blocks, that line's going to disappear. So you don't need to get too worried about that. The line will disappear and your quilting will look just fine. There we go. And now I've got that little last arc. Fill it in just like that. And you know, some different ideas for variations of this block. If you wanted to stitch it up a notch and really emphasize this, we learned some really dense stippling in the last uh, block, in block number four. If you wanted to come in here and do some really dense stippling in these little areas, it's not going to make your block stiff, but it would really add to that look. That's just an idea you might want to play with. Okay, I'm going to stitch on down, and I want to show you uh, free motion zigzag. I want to I want to kind of share with you this idea that I have. We've got these raw edges. You can see these raw edges from where the black fabric was cut away. I'm going to kind of zoom in so hopefully you can see it even better. That's going to just continue to be raw. I've got two layers of stitching here now. It is stable. It's certainly not going to come out. Uh, but you might not like that look on your quilt. That might you know just not look very good to you. So what if you wanted to hide it or cover it up? Well, obviously I've kind of teased this out, so it's, it's quite a bit um, ragged right here. So I'm going to travel stitch around, maybe even knock out some of my grid lines and get to this other side, which is a little bit cleaner, and I'll show you some zigzag right over there. Okay, so you can see I've stitched to this area, I've knocked out a lot of my grid, and I'm way over here in this kind of outside area where I like to just really not do anything. I like to just you have this open for hanging on to the edges of my quilt block. But you know this area is kind of useful if you're trying something different out here like in adding this zigzag you can kind of get a little bit of practice and fiddle around with your settings and kind of make sure that you like how wide your zigzag is and you can double check that it's not going to hit your free motion foot and you can play with it out here and you won't risk putting that in the actual quilt block. It also saves you a thread break. I'm not going to have to break thread and go grab another practice sandwich. So I've just kind of done a little bit of stitching here just to try and find myself a good zigzag. And I'm not changing feet for this. This is still free motion. What I'm doing is I'm basically going to kind of try and keep uh, the fall of the zigzag so that it's falling against this line of stitching that I've already stitched. And I'm put I'm pushing this through the machine as carefully and slowly as I can. I want to maintain a nice stitch length, but it is me doing this. It is not the machine doing this. Uh, the feed dogs are moving, but because I've covered them with the Supreme slider, they're still not coming in contact with my quilt. So if I suddenly jerk my hands, I'm going to get some wild stitches. However, if you're slow and steady with it, and you just concentrate and watch the fall of the needle, then you're just lining up, basically, the, let's say, right side fall of the needle with your line of stitching. And that's going to cover it up, and it's also going to cover up those ragged edges of the, of the black fabric, of the bee fabric. So I'm just slowly and carefully feeding this into the machine. I'm really maintaining kind of a set, steady, slow speed. My stitches are not going to be perfect. This isn't going to be, you know, an exact satin stitch, or they're not going to be spaced, you know, perfectly apart because this is free motion zigzag. It's going to have that slightly uh, imperfect bent to it. However, it's pretty easy and it's pretty fast, and it's fun. I really enjoy this. It's kind of a challenge. It makes me feel like I'm. Um, almost trying to, I don't know, play piano with my eyes closed or something. It's, it's a little bit more challenging than straight line free motion, but this is something that you can most certainly use if you have a quilt with applique and you don't like the raw edges, you can free motion 
zigzag along the edges and it gives you a lot of practice on speed control and movement control. Okay, the one downside to this is that you will have, because this was in the quilting, you will have zigzag on the back of your quilt. So let me show you what this will look like. Here's the side that was just simply quilted with a straight line, right? Here's the side that was zigzagged. So I will have a zigzag on the back side and the front side of my quilt here. So I want to kind of stop here for a second and maybe even get on a soapbox a little bit. This took me a long time to realize. It took me a long time to learn this very, very simple fact. The back of your quilt is the back. It's not the front. And it doesn't have to look perfect. And it's okay to put things like a zigzag on the back of the quilt. It's okay to have those things there. Um, I got started with show quilting kind of very early in, in my quilting journey. I started quilting in 2005. I was show quilting uh, or attempting to show quilt by 2008. So three years is a small jump. Uh, and that drive for perfection really became a monkey on my back. And, you know, it created a lot of obsession with, okay, the front's got to look as good as the back, the back's got to look as good as the front, double-sided quilting. Um, it can become very obsessive and not any fun at all. And there was a time that I would look at this, oh, I will never have a zigzag show up on the back of the quilt. You know, oh, people can see how it was constructed. And, you know, it's, it's silly. It's stupid. Who cares? You know, it doesn't matter. Uh, if you're worried about this, well, you know what? Leave the raw edges. You kind of have to look at it and go, well, which one do I hate more? The raw edges on the surface of the quilt or the zigzag on the back? So make up your mind as far as which one you like better or which one you like least and go with it. I would say just trying out the free motion zigzag, it's a lot of fun. And there's some crazy cool things that you can do with it that you can't really do with straight line free motion quilting. And it's a lot of fun to just try something new, you know, turning on that zigzag, it changes the free motion feel completely. And then trying to stay along the edge of something, I mean, that's a challenge too. So it was just, it's fun to share this kind of thing with you. I really hope that you give it a try and see it as a challenge or simply something fun and new to experiment with and that you will um, definitely accept that the back of your quilt might have a little zigzag on it and it doesn't hurt anything. So I hope you'll keep all of those things in mind. My name is Leah Day and this has been a video for the Building Blocks Quilt Along. Pick up your copy of the Building Blocks Quilt Pattern which comes with a complete set of 42 quilting guides so you can mark your blocks and you're definitely not going to read quilt as desired in this pattern. You're going to have it all laid out for you very clearly. Find that pattern at leahday.com. And until next time, let's go quilt.